we got back to the house and she's like, okay, now we're going to go get some awards. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding, right? She's like, no, I am not messing around. So we did, we sent it in and applied for a bunch of awards. We won four screenplay awards, I think, for it. Like right out of the gate. I was like, this is crazy. Welcome to Midlife Dialogues, where we talk to people 50 and over who are doing interesting things with their lives. And today we are talking to Pam Mandel. Welcome, Pam. It's really nice to talk to you. Likewise. And this is Harley the dog. And Harley the dog. That's nice. Happy to see Harley. Before we get into what you're doing nowadays, I want to talk a little bit about something that I find really interesting about you. I want to talk about your blog. Your blog is called Nerds Eye View, which yeah. is a great title. It's been around for a long time. How long? A have long you been time. Uh, I started it in the mid 90s. You were a very early blogger. I am a dinosaur on the landscape of blogging. What role does that blog fill for you? And the reason I ask you that is it's really a good read it's it's sometimes a little deep it's thoughtful it's not dashed out this is like the blog of someone who knows how to write an essay it's really kind of impressive thank you very much I mean I've been at it for a while so I had it has taught me how to write for sure uh, so I had been doing a whole lot of traveling and I am uh divorced for three years now but I was married to an Austrian man and I was going back and forth between Austria and the US. I was sending these lengthy emails back home to my friends and family. And I was carpooling with uh, a bunch of smart people. I had was contracting as a writer at Microsoft at the time. And one of the guys in my carpool said, have you heard about this thing called blogging? You really should be doing that. That's for you. And so I had not heard about it. And he was like, you should check it out. You were made for it. This is what you want. Like sometimes I'm thinking through something and I want to write about it and I don't have a place for it to live. And that's, and I like that these things to live in public. Um, so I guess I am somewhat of an exhibitionist as a writer. Yeah. At the top of your blog, you describe yourself as, uh, it says weirdo, spinster, gadfly. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. It used to say when I was doing a lot of travel, it used to say a camera, a passport, a ukulele, which were the things I always had with me. That leads to something else I wanted to ask you about. I heard you used to be in an ukulele rock band. Tell me about that. I was in Seattle's loudest ukulele band. We were called the Castaways and we played super loud. We were an 80s rock and roll cover band, but everybody paid, played the uke. How many people? There were five of us. We had a drummer, a bass player, and then three ukulele players. We played like all your favorite 80s songs. <laughs> We played R.E.M., End of the World as we know it. Uh, we played Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train. We played some ACDC. We played a lot of music festivals. Uh, we played private parties. We played corporate events. We played clubs. We were really quite a showstopper. It was a good time. I really miss it. That's a great story. Tell us about writing a memoir. So my book is called The Same River Twice. And when I was 17, 18, 19, I did some absolutely insane travel. And it is about that time in my life. I traveled overland through uh, Pakistan and India and Egypt during the early 80s. And it was just a really different time. And so in some ways, it's a travel story. In other ways, it's a coming of age story. And there's a lot in there about sort of the geopolitics of the world under the Reagan administration during the Thatcher years. It is definitely an 80s time capsule. And uh, it's a lot of adventure travel too. And what does the title mean? Sarah Kalitis said, you cannot step in the same river twice because it is not the same river and you are not the same person. And so it's about how your experiences change you and make you who you are. I finished my manuscript and I was like, oh, I wrote a book. I should try to get this thing out in the world. And I pitched and I pitched and I pitched. What happened was, let's just say that Twitter has changed over the course of the last couple of years. And at the time it was still very much my social home. And I was posting about how I was pitching this book and I was I would post my how many agents I had pitched how many rejections I had got sort of my score right we were not yet in the pandemic and towards the it was, we were coming around to Thanksgiving and I had pitched 75 agents and nothing but right before Thanksgiving this guy contacted me via Twitter and said, I saw, I have been following your work for a long time. And I saw that you've been posting that you have a manuscript. I would love to see it. I'm an acquisitions editor for Skyhorse. Can you send it to me? And I was like, yes, absolutely. I can. Here you go. Would you like a full proposal? Cause I have that too. Here you go. So I sent it off to him. And then as is per usual, when you try to get your book published, I heard nothing. And I got back to him. Oh, it was right around Thanksgiving, I think. And I said, Hey, I'm just checking in. 
I mean, we have until the end of the year, but I'm going to start pitching again in February. And I just wanted to see where this stands with you. And he said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't get back to you. I love the book. We want to publish it. Uh, let me get to a contract. Forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> been busy. <laughs> My publication date was election day, uh, 2020. That was maybe not great. There are a lot of things, other things going on. There's a huge election happening. We were all in our houses. I could not go on book tour. So I did not get by any stretch of the imagination what I was hoping to get out of this experience, right? I still feel robbed of a book tour. I was very excited about like, I'm going to go read in a bookstore. It's going to be great. No, I didn't get to do that until three years later. I did everything online. Next, I believe you wrote a screenplay, right? right. How did that happen? Like I said, everything was online. We were stuck in, you know, virtual spaces and a woman that I also know from social, she was curating a community space online, a cultural space for a Jewish community center in Chicago. And we've been connected online for many, many years. And she contacted me and she said, I want to have you come in and talk about your book. And I was like, that'd be great. I'd love to do that because I don't, I said yes to all the online things, right? She asked me, she said, what do you want to have happen with your book? Like, what would be the best case scenario for you? And I said, honestly, what I would love, like if I could have whatever I wanted, I would want to make a movie out of it. And she said, I'm so glad you said that because I want to write a screenplay from your book. And I was like, ha ha, you're hilarious. She said, no, 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 no. She's like, listen to me. I'm serious. Uh, you don't know that this is what I do. I am a screenwriter. And I was like, I did not know this. I knew her as sort of an somebody online from Twitter. And also she was a radio host for a show in Chicago. And I was like, oh, okay, you're serious, right? And she said, yes, I'm dead serious. And I want to work with you on writing the screenplay for your book. And I was like, okay, we should talk. Uh, what are you doing next week? We'll uh, set up some time to talk about working on a screenplay. She's like, can I'm going to this film festival? And I was like, okay, all right, right, I get it. You're the real deal. Uh, so we set up a call after she got back. I was like, how'd it go? And she said, oh yeah, the documentary I produced took first place. So we had a series of working sessions in which she taught me how to write screenplays. We put the screenplay together uh, and then she came and stayed with me at my place in Seattle for like four days, five days, so we could finish it off together, right? So we sat in my kitchen and finished everything up. We were both really happy with the work. We went to dinner to sort of celebrate concluding this thing was done. And we got back to the house and she's like, okay, now we're going to go get some awards. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding, right? She's like, no, I am not messing around. So we did, we sent it in and applied for a bunch of awards. We won four screenplay awards. Words, I think for it, like right out of the gate. I was like, this is crazy. This just doesn't seem like a thing that should be happening. Her name's Amy Guth and she moved to LA and has been like trying to find backing and a, a house that wants to book it. And, you know, she's like doing LA things. She's an incredibly smart woman. And it was a very serendipitous kind of relationship. So at this point, it's an award-winning screenplay looking to become a movie. That's exactly right. You think it'll happen? I feel really good about it, actually. It's hard because I'm a little bit impatient with it. Film is a much more complicated medium that requires more people and more tools and more planning and just more. I still feel really optimistic about it. It's a very good screenplay. I'm really proud of it. Well, that is great. I'm sitting here trying to think who will have play you. Yeah. So because the story takes place when I am 18, right? So it will probably be somebody we have never heard of, uh, right? Yeah. It will probably be somebody new. This is exciting. I can't wait to hear how that all plays out. You know, my fingers are crossed all the time and I, I do feel relatively optimistic about it. And what's next? So I actually had a book deal that went south. I sold an essay collection to my publisher and they were interested in publishing it. And when we got down to negotiating the contract, I wanted to write out the film rights. I wanted to keep those. I gave them up when I published my memoir, I just had no idea. And I didn't want to give up the film rights, just like, let me keep the film rights. And they said no, and it killed the deal. So I am hoping to relaunch that project. So you said you sold the film rights to your memoir. Well, we had to buy back the rights in order to develop the screenplay, right? But she is crazy sharp. She did all the negotiations. So she was like, this is actually a good, this is pretty good. It's not great. I shouldn't have had to write them a check at all. But she assures me, that it is a very good deal. We write them a check every, once a year to hold on to the rights for it. Oh gosh. Yeah. That's but sucky. I don't like it. I wrote the story. I should be able to do this, right? Oh, well. So after we finish the screenplay, Amy says to me, you have to write something else because you haven't done any of this before. And when I am in LA, 
they're going to ask me what else you've worked on. And I want to have something else to say, oh, she also wrote this thing. So we talked for a little while and I told her this story. This It's a short travel story about my first summer in Seattle. It was the 90s. I did a road trip up to Alaska with an old friend and we stopped to do laundry at this laundromat in Skagway. And my friend was having this like on again, off again drama with his girlfriend back in Boston. And we stopped to do laundry and he's like, I'm going to go find a phone and call the girlfriend. And I was like, oh my God, just go call the girlfriend. Ugh. But we were not romantically involved. So I was in the laundromat and while I was sitting there doing the laundry, this guy walks in and he's wearing like the full Elvis jumpsuit, the, 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 like the hair, the beads, the gold, the stuff. He's got a big blue Cadillac in the driveway. And I'm like, what is even happening here? There is a conclusion to it, which I am not telling you. <laughs> So Amy said to me, write that, give me that as a screenplay. When can I have it? She's like, get to work, chop, chop. I sent her my draft a couple days later and she was like, no notes, excellent work. I thought, okay, great, this is great. And then I thought, what would Amy do? Amy would send it off for awards. So I did. And then I won awards for it, but she also gave it to her production partners and they loved it. And they said, let's make it, let's make it now. So she put together a budget and I started talking about how my short story was going to be a short film, but it was going to cost us a pile of cash to do it. And all these people were like, can we give you money? Can we, where do we send our money? And so we made it in May in uh, Bremerton, which is the town just west of Seattle. Uh, so we shot the thing there in three days and they're just finishing up. It'll be done any minute now. The final cut will be out. How much money did you need to raise? We raised about $50,000. Wow, that's impressive. And as we submit the final film to film festivals, which is our first goal, they have all these rules about where and how you can show your film. So after we've had like the kind of release experience that we are, the best release experience that we can get for it on the festival circuit, then we'll just like put it on Vimeo or something. That's really interesting. And exciting, isn't it? It's thrilling. Did you expect to be doing this in your life? Not in a million years. Not, it's all a huge surprise. No, I did not. I never expected that this would be sort of what I'm doing now. And I absolutely had the fever. <laughs> <laughs> writing for screen is really fun. And um, we've been kicking around an idea about trying to write a series, you know, and maybe writing a pilot and seeing if we can get it funded. When you see your work made into a film, it's just a whole other level, right? That is really interesting. What a, what a turn your life has taken. It also makes me think about, for all the people who are naysayers about social media, your opportunities often come through people you've known through social media. Really interesting. Social media for me and my career in all kinds of aspects was a, just a game changer. I agree. I agree. I look forward to seeing what happens with all your projects. Super interesting. Thanks so much, Pam. Really fun talking to you and everybody listening. Thanks for watching Midlife Dialogues. Watch for part two with Pam next week. We'll be back and we're going to hear about more.